My name is Cedric Fan. I'm from Montreal, Quebec, Canada. To understand a bit more about my journey, I think it's important to know uh, what kind of childhood I have. From junior high into high school, I was pretty much the unpopular kid, uh, almost the unwanted. So growing up in, um, in junior high school and high school was a tough thing because I couldn't relate to anyone and I didn't have uh, the friends that I needed to have. And so when I got to college, I mean, my self-esteem it's quite low or non-existent and so is my soul confidence and so I, I try to figure out what to do with my life at that point and there was this um, group that I found out on campus it's called Project 10 and basically they believe that 10% of the population is gay and so we began to you know explore the gay scene with friends that I made at Project 10, and um, I mean, you name it, we hang out with, at these gay places, like gay cafes and um, you know restaurants. We would go see gay movies that they would show at gay film festival that we would have every year in Montreal, and we would just you know read gay books, gay magazines, and uh, everything we did was gay, like it just. For the time, it was great, you know. I, I was carefree. I didn't have to worry about anything else than living the gay start lifestyle. But then at one point, I think five years later, I think, that I was in the gay scene, I was, I was still feeling a sense of emptiness. I thought, you know, being with the gay crowd is supposed to make you happier, you know, gay, happy. But it wasn't the case. And so I, I left the gay scene and uh, went back into the closet. I was working. By that time, I had a house. Um, I mean, I have money. I mean, I traveled. But still, there was something missing, hu something huge. And I just couldn't pinpoint or, you know, or have a name for it. I find myself praying again for the first time after five years. I just say, look, I needed a change, because I can't go on like this. Show it to me. About a week before Christmas time, I was in the subway, waiting for the train to come to go home that night. And suddenly I heard Christmas caroling. Normal, every season is the same thing. But what was special about it was that, as I was standing waiting for the train to come, there was this voice in my head that was telling me to go check it out. So I went and to look where they were, the singers, and uh, I stood there, just listened to them, and I saw who they were. They were wearing white shirts and ties, and they have, you know, vests and everything, so they all look almost the same. And they had this name tag, and it says Elder, and I thought, this is like a private school then. That night, when I met the missionaries, singing in the metro in the subway, um, I went home and um, I remembered vividly uh, of having prayed five months earlier for a change. So I kind of tied the two together and told myself, perhaps this was the change. I went to church two weeks after and I just felt right at home. And I stayed for the whole three hours. And it was a surprise for me because I usually don't do that. But I just felt right at home. So I went home that night thinking, oh wow, this is something. This is new to me. So I went back again for three months every Sunday. You know in the Book of Mormon where they talk about how the scales of darkness fall off people's eyes? That happened to me. I, my perspective of things started to change. And then I was happy in the church. I got baptized, I got callings, everything. For the next four years, my membership, I was pretty much blissful. Nobody knew at the time in the church that I had these feelings. I didn't want to tell anyone. I didn't want to deal with them, period, in the church. But the Lord wanted me to deal with it in His church. 
one time I was in Salt Lake City, I passed by a desert bookstore, right? And I saw this book called In Quiet Desperation. So I was intrigued by the cover page, you know, a man blindfolded. So I went in the store and I, I grabbed it and I bought it. And I went home and started reading it. It was an eye opener to me. For the first time, someone in the church has experienced it, um, has dealt with it. It gave me a new sense of hope that I could somehow have this same faith journey. I started for the first time to reach out for help. I told my bishop, that went well, surprisingly, but he did not know what resources to refer me to. So what do I do now? I know why I feel the way I feel, so what? I'm still lonely. The plan of happiness is not about being, uh, it's not about living forever on your own. That's not happy. I didn't fit in. I, I felt that I wasn't a man, real man, if you will. I have all these stereotypes, you know, of what a man ought to be, and I wasn't it. Because when I was in the gay scene, there is a specific, um, what you might call it, beauty, male beauty, that they kind of like promote. You know, you, you have to be a certain height, you have to be a certain weight, and you have to have a certain hairstyle. And there's even that gay dress code, you know, and so that was the ideal gay man. You know, if you, didn't, if you don't fit into that mold, then you're, the, you're not good enough. So I wasn't good enough, and I didn't fit in the mold. That's why I left the gay scene. And even though I had a gospel in my life, it didn't help me to feel that I was equal to the man out there. And, and, and feeling that, well, you know what? You're not going to make it. Happiness is for the other man, not for you, because they're going to get married, and you're not. And then a scripture came to mind one day, you know, in the Book of Mormon where it said, where Christ was teaching, and he said, what kind of man you ought to be? And then he said, even as I am. And then I realized, wait a second here, I could be more Christ-like. Then that would be the man that I ought to become. And that would give me the feeling of being whole. It hit me because now I have a new ideal of what a man ought to be or what I ought to become as a man. Now, I think I begin to warm up to the idea that perhaps one day I too can get married. I'm saying I'm warming up, doesn't mean that's going to happen. That I'm going to start dating women because that hasn't ha you know, happened yet. Well, who is to say? I think I have grown more staying in the church then stay out of church. You don't leave the church just because you don't feel fit in. Um, the one person that can help you is Christ, and he can help you within the church if you let him. That's why I have stayed this long in the church still, and looking back, I absolutely have no regret. Now, I know sometimes people think, oh, I have enough of church. You know, I don't want to hear about church anymore. You know, I want to figure it out on my own. But you don't have to figure it out on your own. You can still be in church and figure things out with the help of people that you will find that the Lord will put on your path. Any area in our life that we know it's broken, well, the Savior can fix it. I want to recite uh, a song called Broken by Kenneth Cope, and it goes like this. Broken so souls that need his mending, broken hearts for offering. I believe that God loves broken things. S and yet our broken faith, our broken promises sent love to the cross. And still that broken flesh, that broken heart of his offers us such grace and mercy, covers us with love undeserving. This broken soul that cries for mending, this broken heart for offering, I'm convinced that God loves broken me. Praise His name. My God loves broken things.